There's been a lot of discussion on the wrestling interwebs the past couple of days about who John Cena's opponent is going to be at WrestleMania 34. And that's on the heels of some reports about uh, John Cena is staring down the barrel of a major WrestleMania storyline, a major WrestleMania opponent for 34 in a story that would be more important and for the WWE Championship. So it would seem to knock AJ Styles out of the mix. Sorry for those of you that wanted to see that rematch yet again. But you know what? The discussion about Cena and what he's going to do at WrestleMania, it makes sense because he is still, even in a part-time role, a prominent figure in WWE. And after over a decade of all that massive investment in Cena, his character, his likeness, it only makes sense for the WWE to still try to get some type of return on that massive investment in Cena, revolving around some major angle at WrestleMania uh, while they still can, because who knows how many more years are going to be able to do that. So it makes a ton of sense. It makes a world of sense. But when you look at the, the landscape, when you think about an opponent, a big-time opponent, a match that's bigger and more important than for the WWE Championship. Who could that really be? And the real truth of the matter is, there aren't a lot of viable options out there. It's really kind of a narrow, limited field. And I don't know that the options are all that appealing. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to bring back Hulk Hogan, a guy who you've still blacklisted with his panache for some ugly racism in the, his mid-60s with a terrible back? He's going to come back on the 25th anniversary of Raw, and all of a sudden he says, I want you, Cena, brother, at WrestleMania 34, brother, and we're going to tear down the New Orleans Silver Dome Superdome, brother. Yeah, I don't think so. We know that's not happening. If Stone Cold didn't come back to wrestle CM Punk, he's most certainly not going to do so in his 50s now to wrestle Cena. You could say The Rock, but The Rock has become too big in Hollywood. Why would he risk coming back again? to WWE get even maybe another injury that could delay filming schedules. When he's making so much more as an actor, it just makes no sense. And you've been there twice already. Why would we do it a third time? Now, I know Sting probably thinks that he could still wrestle again, but the simple fact of the matter is Sting, Cena, that would be a no-win situation even if he did it because Sting losing would be stupid and Sting winning would be stupid. It would just be stupid. Just not a lot of appeal there for that. What are you going to do? Try to dust off Ric Flair. You'd be lucky if he doesn't die in the ring. Shawn Michaels, you're going to bring him out of retirement? Frankly, we've already seen that match at WrestleMania. We don't need it again. Now, if you want to go down the Breakfast Club route and you want to say Triple H, well, yeah, they've already had their one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. But it's Breakfast Club business, baby. But you're not pointing in that direction, nor should you be pointing in that direction. If you're going to point in any Breakfast Club direction, then you would point in the Randall Keith Orton direction because, by God... This would be match number 3,000, and this time it would count. These guys never faced off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania for all the matches they had over the years. You could at least make an argument for that. Who's the best of their generation, blah, blah, blah. But you won't go there. You're not going there with Roman Reigns, one, because you already know where they're heading with Roman Reigns for WrestleMania, at least what the plans have been for an entire damn almost year now. But furthermore, you've already done John Cena versus Roman Reigns. What was it at? No Mercy? Doing it the second go-round most certainly isn't going to be bigger than the WWE title. So who do you have? Are you going to say Shane McMahon? He's going off in a different direction, and even that, Shane never beats anybody. That's not a bigger match. If it was going to be a McMahon, and it was going to be bigger than the title, it would either be Stephanie or it would be Vince. Stephanie, be, for obvious reasons, seemed to be wrestling a fucking woman. But Vince, you're talking about the CEO of the company, the owner, and all this crap. But you're talking about a guy in his 70s who's more interested in trying to pursue his football aspirations and dreams than running an effective sports entertainment corporation. So that's a no. So who do you got left? It feels like you've got two options. One of them's Batista. And yes, there would be a tremendous, tremendous appeal there in the sense of, once again, Hill Batista talking about Cena still wanting to kiss babies and hug fat girls. How could you ever, ever get tired of that? But there still would be appeal there in terms of Batista's doing his own thing in the movie world, Cena's starting to do his own thing in the movie world. They were the two guys that were the face of their generation for close to a decade. They were the guys. They were the big stars. Who's the better one? Who's this and who's that? But to be fair, you've already went down this path 
uh, on the road to WrestleMania 26. Do you really want to go there again? But with Batista coming back after being gone for almost four years, maybe it could work. And while I would have bigger and alternative plans for Batista revolving around him entering 30 at the Rumble, eliminating Roman Reigns, winning the Rumble, and going on to face Lester at Mania, and winning the belt at Mania, that would be my ideal situation for Batista. John Cena would be a viable alternative. It would be a passable alternative. A very, very passable alternative, even though, again, we've been down that path before. This is one of these things where even though we've been down that path before, I wouldn't mind going down that breakfast club road one more time. And maybe that's it. And maybe that is the option. And maybe that's the way the WWE is going. And if that's what it is, then fine. I can live with that. That seems to be the type of WrestleMania match a John Cena should have. It seems like the type of match that these two guys should have at this stage of their career. I'm cool with that if that's where they go. And if that is the case, I apologize for everything I'm going to say after this point in the video. Because to me, it would seem like everything is pointing realistically towards one individual and one opponent to which I say, no, 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 God bless him, frickin' no! And that is The Undertaker! This dude is like the clap. He just won't stay away. It's bad enough that after the streak was ended at WrestleMania 30 by Brock Lesnar, he continued to wrestle at WrestleMania every year, even though there was real no purpose or consequence for The Undertaker to appear anymore. He has now also just recently, at last year's WrestleMania, this year's WrestleMania, whatever the hell you want to call it, just lost to freaking Roman Reigns in that terrible main event. He laid all this gear down in the ring and exited up the damn ramp. If Lesnar at 30 wasn't the end of the road, then that match with Roman Reigns, and believe me, once you saw it, it made sense, that most certainly should have been the last time we ever saw The Undertaker as an active in-ring competitor for the WWE. But now you're hearing reports about how The Undertaker's in better shape, he's gotten hip surgery, he's gotten this and that. There's some thought that maybe he, he's had money troubles in recent years, so maybe he needs the seven-figure payout that comes from this. You know, that there's an appeal there for they've never done Taker and Cena just like they never did Taker and Sting. Well, the bottom line is, there is a timing, there is a place to do all of that. The WWE never did Hogan versus Flair at WrestleMania. It doesn't mean they should be trotting it out at the New Orleans Superdome at WrestleMania 34. It doesn't mean that they should. So it's ridiculous to think that now, when Cena is a part-timer and really comes across like he doesn't give a fuck, to sit there and have him square off against... The legend of the company, arguably the goat of WWE, the guy that was the standard bearer and the leader of that organization for decades, generations, to now face off at WrestleMania. What's the hook? What's the point? What's the purpose? What are you going to call it? The one last ride match where it's both of their swan songs in WWE? Taker had been in serious physical decline over the past several years. Where is the appeal to seeing him in a ring again after we saw what we saw at WrestleMania 33 with Roman Reigns. That was terrible, that was dreadful, that was painful to watch and oh so necessary to give everybody involved up to and including and especially Vince McMahon and The Undertaker a clue, a hint, an idea that the time had come and that time is over. We do not need to see The Undertaker wrestling ever again in WWE. And we most certainly don't need to see The Undertaker versus John Cena five, seven to ten years too goddamn late at WrestleMania. Is even now. If they did Undertaker versus Sting, you're about seven years too late to the goddamn party. And yes, while you could say there's appeal and there's icons, this has been a dream match for so many years, at some point in time, it loses its relevance, it loses its meaning, and it just doesn't carry the same significance, it doesn't have the same weight or power with the fans. Sometimes you have to strike while the iron is God bless it hot. And the iron would have been the hottest with Cena be still being the top guy in the WWE who beat everybody facing off against the one guy who, no matter what happens at WrestleMania, the one constant is every year The Undertaker wrestles at WrestleMania, he wins at WrestleMania! 
That shit should have been happening five, six years ago. And while the WWE, somewhat understandably, was fiddle-fucking with Cena and The Rock, they blew their opportunity, the timing, the moment, to get Undertaker versus Cena at WrestleMania when the hell it should have happened. Like, in an ideal world, you should have done Taker Sting at 27. You should have done Taker Triple H just once at 28. Maybe you fumble fuck around and you say, well, you do Taker and Punk at 29. WrestleMania 30, that should have been main event, John Cena versus The Undertaker. What's going to happen? Now, that would have been massive business. And yeah, screw the Daniel Bryan crap. If it's John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, that bitch is main event as that bitch should main event and as that bitch better main event. But now, four years later, the dynamics have changed so much. You know Cena's only there to kind of fuck off and do it when he wants to, but he really doesn't care as much. And The Undertaker, even if he cares more than he ever has, he just physically can't do it anymore. And what more evidence do you need than the match you just saw last year? Like, how all of a sudden is a guy in his early 50s going to get miraculously so much better to where he can sit there and say, nah to the hundreds of physical ailments and maladies that he has and come out and perform like it's 2011 again. He can't. This is just another example of the WWE screwing the pooch and missing the opportunity and screwing it up on the timing. And if they do it now, Undertaker versus John Cena at WrestleMania, it's a farce, it's a joke, it's stupid, and it's too little, and most importantly of all, way too goddamn late. And oh, since we're still technically in the holiday season at the end of 2017, John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 34, humbug that shit!